This Twins Angels series is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. After dropping four in a row, a season high here at home, the Twins will try to stop the bleeding in game two of a split doubleheader tonight against the Los Angeles Angels. There has been a change in the wild card standings after the Angels 4-3 win in 12 innings. They have pulled even with the Twins a game and a half behind Houston. Welcome to Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North. Tom Hanneman along with Tim Laudner. You know, for some rookies, big moments can be overwhelming, but we have seen the absolute opposite this season from Miguel Sano and saw it again in the first game of two today here when Sano tied the game with a monster blast. Sano has had an immediate impact on his team. I'll say he has, uh, this young man, done a really nice job since his recall earlier this summer and what has he done all he's done is hit the ball out of the ballpark and drive in runs take big walks this young man has showed a presence at the plate a discipline at the plate that you don't see very often in a young man like this uh, clearly his presence his ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark is something that we haven't seen for a good long time this young man very very strong he can hit the ball a long way making a bit to be rookie of the year in the American League. No question about it. Still to come, Dick and Burt focus on the job ahead for twin starter Mike Pelfrey in tonight's critical clash in the wild card race. by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Ram. Come in and get a great deal on the best trucks during Ram Truck Month. This afternoon, the Twins match their season high four-game losing streak tonight. Game three with the Angels, and they hope to break that losing streak and get back in the win column. Dick Bramer, Burp Lilevin for the second game of the split doubleheader. In the first half of the year when the Twins at one point were 11 games above 500, Mike Pelfrey was one of the big reasons why, and the Twins are going to hope 
do whatever they can to get Mike Pelfrey back to where he was in, uh, during that first half. Yeah, one thing that the pitcher coach Neil Allen worried about Mike Pelfrey was the workload that he was getting this year. Yes, he pitched very well at the beginning of the year. First 11 starts. Yeah, look at the great earned run average. But over the last 16 starts, only one win. And that's the key for Mike Pelfrey. Get back to worry at the beginning of the year. How do you do that? Let's take a look at Mike Pelfrey as far as the scouting report. Ten days between starts. Neil Heaton wants him. Neil, Neil Allen wants him to go out and attack with the strike zone early. Go right after him. If they get five or six innings, they'll be happy, I think, with Mike Pelfrey on the mound, especially six. They'd like to get a quality start out of him. And they'd like to get a win, hoping that Pelfrey can ride an early lead, perhaps, to a Twins win. Game three with the Angels coming up next. Postponed, and the one that was supposed to be played last night was played this afternoon. The Twins losing another tough ball game. All four of these losses, Bert, have been winnable games, and those are particularly frustrating to lose in September. They really are, and a couple of them were extra inning losses, too, and that hurts. So the Twins, you know what? That is then, this is now. They need a good start from Pelfrey as Mike Sosha in his 16th season. As manager of the Angels, very good record against the Twins. Only team they met, or only time they met in the playoffs in the ALCS in uh, 2002. The Angels won that series as well. The Menards batting order for the Angels Eric Ibar in the leadoff spot, Cole Calhoun, Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, David Murphy, David Freeze, Chris Ionetta, Efren Navarro, and Tony Featherson. And it will be Mike Pelfrey on the mound. The last time Mike Pelfrey pitched, you have to go back to the 9th of September in Kansas City. Pitched a good ball game, five and a third innings. He only gave up one run to the Royals, and that was a solo home run to Ben Zobris. And the Twins ended up winning that ball game. Hey, guess what? That game went 12 innings, and the Twins won three to two. That was the pinch hit the home run by Miguel Sano. Twins out in the field brought to you by Northland Ford. This time we're going to take a look at the infield first. Luke Nunez, Dozier, and Maurer. In the outfield, well, Herman catching. 
In the outfield is Rosario Buxton and the oldest man on the two rosters, Torrey Hunter, playing in both games and playing a position in both games. It's not right field one game, DH the next. He's out there. He understood. Look at that. I can't do that. Can you do that? I can't do that. No. <laughs> and I didn't play this afternoon. Tory Hunter with a remarkable uh, end to uh, this 2015 season. He's in there every day. Buxton did not play. He actually came in as a pinch runner late. He'll be in center field. And so the Twins, who desperately need to win here, if they can win today, they'll, or tonight, they will. Uh, emerge again ahead of the Angels in the standings and boy you lose these ball games four in a row like this at home and and it's tough but the fact of the matter is the Twins can still be just a half game out of the wild card spot if they win here and if Sonny Gray and the A's beat Houston tonight mm -hmm. Ibar the batter and the first pitch loop to left a base hit so Ibar right out of the shoot drops a single in the left well, you know what? I said that Neil Allen, the pitching coach, wants Mike Pelfrey to establish that fastball, but also control that fastball, especially down in the zone. That fastball right there, Abreu, a tough guy to strike out, makes contact, gets a base hit. And now Cole Calhoun. Pelfrey was told after that last start that he'd be giving an ex be given an extra day or two turns out the way it turned out he essentially was skipped in the rotation. Ten days since his last start. I bar at first base he stole a base in game one. And the Angels have stolen five bases off the twins in the first two games here. Big leg kick and the ball lifted down the left field line chased by Rosario and just out of his reach he got there and I think the ball landing on the second row I don't know if he was interfered by a fan trying to reach for that ball or not but it did go back maybe a couple rows good effort by Rosario take a look right here Calhoun hitting that fly ball and Trying to fight the crowd right there. Other people trying to catch the ball, which they have the right to. Guy in the blue windbreaker caught it. Mm -hmm. One strike and a check of Ibar at first. I see if you're a real Twins fan, you catch the ball and then you put it in Rosario's glove real quick. And then Rosario would come up with it. Remember somewhere, I think it was Toronto, Chad Allen is now the double A pitching coach. A similar play in the left field corner. Didn't make the catch, but he bent over the wall, picked the glove up, picked the ball up with his glove, and held it up like he caught the ball. And as I recall, I think he got the out call. The this out. is pre pre replay, obviously. Yes. Good. <laughs> one and one to Cole Calhoun. Calhoun in his fourth season with the Angels, his second full season, just 27 years old. Signed by the Angels out of Arizona State back in 2010. Twins keeping an, uh, an eye on I bar. There has been eight stolen bases against Pelfrey in nine attempts. He does have one pickoff. Chris Herman has a bit of a stronger arm than Kurt Suzuki, and it's Herman doing the catching. And line foul. Pelfrey over his career against the Angels in five career starts. He's three and two with a 3.94 ERA. Now two of those starts came when he was with the Mets, three of them with the Twins. And like this afternoon starter, Kyle Gibson, he gets an awful lot of ground ball double plays, and he would take one of those here gladly. Yeah, Gibson got one in game one, uh, his 27th of the year behind him, and Pelfrey has 27. Joe Maurer. Has to leap out of the way and able to uh, leap over Ibar. I think that ball hit Ibar. I think Ibar is the only person who kept that from being thrown into foul territory. Got him right in the hip, it looked like. That's one way to slow him down. Mm -hmm. Well, quick throw over. And ball right into the sliding L. Ibar. Right in the ribs. Well, 
Job. Didn't have the glove down low enough to catch the throw. One and two. Ground ball. Ploof to Dozier. Dozier to Maurer. There's your double play. Two down. And number 28 on the year for Mike Pelfrey. Turn behind him. That leads all of baseball in double plays turned. Two down. That'll bring up Mike Trout. Watch the exchange at second base with Ibar, a middle infielder, with a good, hard, clean slide into Dozier, the second baseman hanging in there. Dozier sliding into the bag, and that's what I think baseball is contemplating. I want to get your thoughts about that over the course of tonight, given what happened to Jung Ho Gong of the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. Two down. Here's Trout. Chris Coughlin went in with a slide, reached for the base with his hands, and then with his legs uh, went out and made contact with Gong and ended up uh, shredding his knee and breaking his tibia. 1 0. And now a strike. Well, Gong's not the first one to have that done. You know, uh, uh, I go back to Rod Carew, 1970. Mike Hegan, a good hard slide, and that's what you're taught to do is break up the double play any way you can. One and one to Trout on the outside corner. It's interesting, and we never want to see players get hurt, but Gong was the guy who veered out of the second base, first to second base base line. Uh, in a really dirty slide to try to take out Danny Santana when the Twins were in Pittsburgh. One and two to Mike Trout. And a bouncer. Bauer with a great stop going to his left. And he makes the play. Nice defensive play by Joe Mauer. Four hour game this afternoon. Twelve innings and the Twins and the Angels look like they're on, toe, on their toes here tonight for game two. Particularly when they're at home. Twins still 43 and 30 at home. They've lost four in a row, but they've got four more games in this homestand. And the Menards batting order. Four game two. Aaron Hicks out of the lineup. Brian Dozier back in a familiar spot in the leadoff spot. Then Joe Bauer, Miguel Sano moves up to third. Bluff Hunter Rosario, the middle of the lineup. Then Nunez, Herman, and Buxton. And the Twins have their work cut out for them here this in game two of this ball game. Garrett Richards on the mound, 13 game winner. 20 of his 28 starts have been quality starts, and the Angels are 16 and 12 when he starts. He has probably been the most consistent starter for Mike Sosha and the Angels. And it pitches up. Plenty of fastball. You'll see 96. You might see 97. First pitch up, ball one. 
Dozier, Maurer, and Sano. Twins were able to tie the game up after falling behind in the middle innings this afternoon, but were never able to take the lead. The only lead they had was their short lived lead a couple of nights ago when they scored five runs in the first. It didn't last very long. And 3 0 now to Dozier. Yeah, Richards making his second start against the Twins this season. He lost to Irvin Santana and the Twins 3 0 in Anaheim back in July. The only, strike at 96. The only damage in that ball game was Trevor Plouffe's three run home run in the fourth inning. That was all the scoring for either side. Foul back. Wow. That was hit I, right I, in front of him. I would have gone underneath that table. That ball was smoked back here. Yeah. And what did I do? I stood up. And you were in about ready to run. <laughs> I was in position to try to make a play. There's a high pop up down the left field line. And near the tarp, and Ibar gets on top of the tarp, but has no play. I was, when I, that foul ball was coming back, I stood up and I was in triple threat position. There were three different ways I could have gone. I could have gone down under the desk. I could have gone to my right, or I could have gone to my left. But I was not no, going to sit here. Not a lot of room left there. You're in trouble. Three and two to Dozier. And swings at a breaking ball in the dirt, one away. Well, all fastballs, and then uh, Richards on a three-two pitch throws that hard slider, and Dozier had to be guessing fastball by that swing. Richards picks up a strikeout. Northland Ford defense for the Angels. David Murphy in left. Mike Trout in center. Cole Calhoun in right. Freeze, Ibar, Featherston, Navarro, the infielders. Ionetta behind the plate. Who holds the designated hitter? Here's Joe Mauer. Strike one. Mauer against Richards, three hits and seven at bats. Well, back two strikes. And there's the 97 we spoke of. Well, we saw Joe Mauer end the first inning on a great play. Watch that ball. Without that. Long glove at first baseman's glove. That ball looked like it was almost past Joe. You can still see the ball at the tip of his glove, but he got that final out. Nice defensive play by Mauer. 0 oh 2 to Mauer with one gone in the Twins first. On the outside corner. Two down. That more of the curveball right there that struck out Mauer. So Richards picks up another strikeout, his second. The hard breaking ball off the plate, which we saw throughout the first game. Uh, Doug Eddings, the home plate umpire here in for game wow. two. That pitch was outside and the catcher didn't catch it well, but still called a strike. Here's Sano. Strike one. Sano hit had the Twins won the game. One of the biggest home runs of the season in the seventh inning to tie the game at three. Certainly one of the longest ones of the season. Down low, one and one. So no hit one into the upper deck above the bullpen. There haven't been too many balls that have been hit up there. He measured that at 453 feet. One of the longest home runs hit here at Target Field. So no faced Richards in Anaheim. Back in July, he was 0 for 2 with a strikeout. 2 and 1. And swing on a breaking ball, 2 and 2. And the breaking ball is 90. The fastball is 97. Well, here's what Miguel Sano did in game one a big two run home run. That coming in the seventh inning. 
saw the velocity on the ribbon board uh, where the ball landed 95 miles per hour. Half swing and now it's three and two. And so so no turned around a 95 mile per hour fastball and hit it 450 some feet. Full count blue on deck. Takes ball four. So knows hamstring is much better. And so he's less and less a candidate to be pinch run for. It was a in the middle innings, ninth inning, I guess it was. Sano came up again and Twins had a chance to pinch run for him, but decided to leave him in. Here's Plouffe with a man aboard and two out. Trevor, a base hit in his first ball game, and now currently on a nine game hitting streak. A season high. Got a fastball up, fouled it straight back. Was Trevor Plouffe that hit that three run home run off of Richards to allow the Twins to beat him and the Angels three to nothing? The only win the Twins have had so far against the Angels. On the outside corner at 97. Saw Richards' numbers, an opponent batting average of 244, about one walk every three innings, but 17 home runs allowed. 0 oh 2 to Plouffe. Nice block by Ionetta. So he even got the glove out of the way. It was just going to take it against his chest to deaden the ball. 1 and 2. Yeah, Richards last year for the Angels was having a fantastic year in 26 starts, 13 and 4. And then he went to cover first base and his left knee got all tangled up. He ended up having knee surgery. Season was over. Had an ERA at 2.61 at the time of his injury. Another breaking ball, another check swing. Two and two. Richards, 27 years old, grew up in the Southern California area. Angels number one pick back in 2009 attended University of Oklahoma. Foul back. Dan Gladden. Oh. Just to the right of Mr. Gladden. Who had his glove but that doesn't mean anything. Sure didn't in Kansas City. <laughs> Two and two. Ouch. Ouch. Most of the bat sails down an exit. And the out is made at first. And that's what you call getting sawn off.
An interesting conversation earlier today in the clubhouse about the fun they're all having coming to the park right now, meaningful baseball this late in the year. Last four years have been really tough on these guys, and Plouffe said this has been a blast to play meaningful games, big games like this against the Angels. Certainly winning some of these games would help guys, and he mentioned the bounce-back ability of some of the younger players in this team and how every game they start fresh, they start new, trying to win just one game, get to that dance party after the game. The focus has been great, he said, and no doubt this will be the biggest test they've had, bouncing back with such a short time in between a tough loss earlier today in game number one. And, guys, this is a series that they can still sell, but just split in. They can find a way to win the night and get that good feeling back before tomorrow's game. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Want to know to Pujols. Popped up. Pujols has gone six games without a hit for the first time in his career. And uh, like Torrey Hunter playing. Both games in right field. Pujols relegated to DH duty. And he says, I'm just going to play. I'm going to do what I can, the best I can, until they tell me we're not playing any more games. To center, and Buxton retreats. One down. Think about what you said, though, after 15 years of pro ball at the major league level, he's got, what, six games where he has been hitless. It's his right foot. It's not plantar fasciitis. He has no idea what the problem is. It just knows that he, that every time he takes a step, it hurts. One down, and that'll bring up David Murphy. And on the outside corner, a strike. Murphy started in left field this afternoon. Gets to start out there again tonight. Nice pickup for the Angels. A veteran guy won't hurt you defensively. He's got some power. Always put a good average hitter two over his career. He's played with the Red Sox, the Rangers earlier this year with the Indians and then traded over to the Angels on July 28th. One and one from Pelfrey. And this one hit. Over near the seats again, chased by Rosario and Ploof. One and two. Pelfrey had a very quick first inning, a base hit by Ibar, then the double play, and then the nice play by Joe Mauer. Only nine pitches thrown in that first inning. Murphy 0 for 7 against Pelfrey, and Pelfrey's ahead of him 1 and 2. Change up off the plate. And that change up is that split finger that worked so well at the beginning of the year, and it has not been as consistent. You can see him set that split finger up and then take it to the glove and change it if it's another pitch, like a fastball. Liner to left, and Rosario with a sliding catch and left. Two down. He had a great read on that ball right there. It's been a long time since the Twins have had a left fielder who would get an out on that play. The safest play is to play it short, play the hop, and he just plays so aggressively. Watch, out it, there. watch his first couple moves. A uh, center field or type of instincts. He came in quick and able to get that line drive out. Nice defensive play. We first saw him, at least I did, in spring training this year, and I was really impressed with his ability to go get the ball. He made, we've seen a lot of his great throwing during the regular season, but he was doing that back in March. 1 0. And the Twins moved him around in spring training like they have now during the regular season. You know, and every time we show him on, on TV, chewing the gum, you know, just looks relaxed out no. there. Just a game, right? Yeah. Swing and a miss, two and one. <laughs> Chopper, uh, that's going to be a tough play. Yeah. Blue bare hands, fires, and Mauer backhands a low throw, an infield hit for David Free. Yeah, not much. Uh, Loof could do on that except what he tried to do, but Freeze beat it out. 
Tonight's cold hard fact is brought to you by clean Chris Coors Light aka the silver bullet. And you look at the uh, hopeful since September 1st and the twins playing 500 baseball and I think everyone would acknowledge when you go into September you have to believe that 500 is not going to be good enough. Twins were eight and four though just a few days ago. Now Cleveland playing pretty good baseball and they come into today's play playing right at 500 and they're only what four games out of the uh, wild card yep. chase or it's three games excuse me. Ionetta on the outside corner. Angel scored four runs in 12 innings today without a run scoring on a hit. And that if I'm the manager that's got to make me feel really good that I'm scoring runs without getting run producing hits the runs for the Angels scored on a sacrifice fly a fielder's choice and a couple of times a contact play was on to mm -hmm. get the runs three and four across the plate. One and one. One and two. Well, three straight fastballs to Ionetta. And Pelfrey, not a strikeout pitcher. 77 strikeouts in 153 innings pitch. And over his career, averaging about five strikeouts per nine. Needs quick outs to get deep into the ballgame. Alfrey has pitched very well here at Target Field this year. 2.35 ERA in 12 starts. He's allowed only two home runs hit here and 10 home runs overall. Fouled back. He left a pitch up. I hesitate to even mention home runs with Ionetta at the plate. Nine on the year, but three of them against the Twins. Mm -hmm. I wasn't afraid to. Ionetta actually struck on now 99 career home runs. So he can do that uh, in a couple days, he can get his 100 when they go to Houston. One and two. Another foul back. Neil Allen has talked to Mike Pelfrey a lot over the last couple weeks. Of course, it's 10 days between outings. And Mike Pelfrey knows exactly what he needs to do here is get into that fifth or sixth inning, see where he's at. Well, just 26 pitches here with. Five outs and he's got two strikes on the batter. Angels helped in the first inning. They were swinging pretty aggressively early in the count. Breaking ball off the plate. Keep the tempo going too. That's important for Mike Pelfrey. Sometimes when a runner gets on, he seems to slow down a little bit. And we've already seen a couple nice defensive plays behind him. Sometimes if you take a lot of time out there your defense starts hang, hanging out on their heels a little bit more than on their toes. Two and two. Full count. And that'll free up freeze to take off early from first. I like that. Free up freeze. Yeah. Looking for something middle in that he can drive somewhere. Chris Herman right here behind the plate, where I'm sure he will sit outer half of the plate. Mauer holding the runner. 
Lionette has never been a big average hitter, just a power hitter. They're going inside. And a pop up. Dozier with a long run. And Hunter calls him off, makes the catch. The runner stranded at first. A score of the second inning for Mike Belford. And Eduardo Nunez. Congratulations to the Cedar, Cedar Rapids Colonels. They won game two of their best of five, uh, game three of their best of five playoff series for the Midwest League Championship. They lead the series two games to one. They want to beat the uh, West Michigan Whitecaps today, three to two. Here's Hunter. Cedar Rapids used to be the Angels low A affiliate in the Midwest League. Mike Trout and Byron Buxton uh, already legendary there. Trout for what he's done in the big leagues. Buxton for what the Twins are hoping he will do in the big leagues. Both of them came through Cedar Rapids. 2 and 0. Oh. Swing and a miss. Hunter got a base hit in the bottom of the 12th. Twins pinch ran Buxton for him, but only got Buxton as far as second base after the sacrifice bunt. You know, my my younger brother Joe also played in Cedar Rapids. Oh, did he? He was a pitcher. Yeah. When did he pitch there? Because that's where I started my broadcasting career. Mm, let's see. He graduated. He's uh, six years under me, so he graduated about 75. So probably around 77 somewhere. Oh, there. That's when I was. Really? Joe Blylevin was his name. Okay. Hunter takes one up and in. I met him. I know his name. I've met him several <laughs> times. Hunter will take first with a walk. Well, fastball up and in. Second walk for Richards in the ball game. Yeah, these guys were teammates and Tory Hunter. Thank you. All four. Twins took a two out walk in the first, now a lead off walk in the second, and here's Rosario. Now, when I was in Cedar Rapids, first they were a uh, San Francisco Giants affiliate, Chili Davis. That's where I first met Chili a long, long time ago. And then they switched to the Reds. Well, maybe he wasn't in Cedar Rapids then. He was in the, I thought it was Cedar Rapids was the Angels. Uh, Minor league franchise. In the late 70s, I think they were still the Reds. But okay. Maybe that's why I never met Joe Blylevin until. <laughs> until we go to Anaheim. One strike to Rosario. Got the first Twins hit leading off the sixth inning this afternoon. A triple. Not that you needed me to say that. Seems like half his hits are triples. Here's a ball hit to right center field. And the first Twins hit tonight. Hunter will check in at second base. 
The start of something for the Twins, first and second, with nobody out. Yeah, Rosario just continues to stay average. I mean, he just that average always at 270, 280 range. 17 doubles, 14 triples, 10 home runs. Putting together a very solid rookie season. Eduardo Nunez did not play this afternoon. Eduardo Escobar, the shortstop, went 0 for 5 with three strikeouts. And Escobar involved in a key play. The Twins were in position to get out of the top of the 12th without, without allowing a run. It was a line drive hit at Escobar, but it came out of the shadows. And he said after the game, he didn't see the ball until it got right on top of him. But a chop butt. And Escobar is retired. He'll get credit for a sacrifice with two men moving up. Well, a nice butt because it hit in front of home plate and it had some height on it. And by the time it came down, the only play was for Richards, the pitcher, to throw out Nunez. So he gets his second sacrifice of the year. Well, Nunez might have been bunting for a base hit there, but he will get credit for the sacrifice. So now two men in scoring position. The Angels will play the infield back, and Chris Herman's got to try to put the ball in play here. 98 at bats, 36 strikeouts. Herman with 10 runs batted in on the year. Right back to the pitcher, and now Hunter's hung up to dry or between third and home, and he's out. So we saw in the first game what can happen on the plus side when you have the contact play on. And I don't know whether the Twins had the contact play on there or not. Ball was a hit rather sharply up the middle, knocked down by the pitcher, and Torrey took a couple of steps and was in no man's land. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna come out and see if a Richards was okay. But right here, I think Torrey thinking that that ball's gonna get past Richards. Looked like it hit him in the hand or the thigh area. Out there to check him out. The ball, of course, deflected right in front of the pitcher when it could have bounced just about anywhere. But in the play we spoke of a few moments ago, when Escobar had a line drive hit right at him, they're going to let Richards throw a few pitches here, make sure he's okay. Throw at least one more, and then he'll give Mike Social the thumbs up, and we'll be ready to go. I was just going to say, as Herman was ready to go with that first pitch, and he's at bat, that a ground ball hit anywhere other than right back to the mound or to third would score a run. Let's see where it got Richards right there. It didn't look like it hit him in the uh, in the arm or hand. Maybe near the hip area. Herman reaches on a fielder's choice. Rosario to third, and with two outs, it'll be left to Buxton. In this four game losing streak, there have been so many at bats like Buxton's here where a two out hit here or there would have led to a win. Buxton hitting a 200. Yeah, this is his 36th game, and he has driven in only two runs. Six doubles a triple, but two runs batted in. And he threatens to butt. Ball one. Now, when the Twins were hoping to take the lead after tying the game in the seventh inning, Twins had Trevor Plouffe at third and one out. And Kurt Suzuki put down a bunt on his own. And it was a bunt. About halfway between the baseline and the mound, and Trevor Plouffe didn't get the quickest break from third base. Ended up being thrown out of the plate. This is kind of the same situation, only with two outs. Buxton with the speed to outrun just about anything. Down and away, two and zero. Oh. This can be a weapon for him because Freeze, the third baseman, is playing a deep third base. You got a speedy runner at third. Well, you got to take a shot right here that Richards is going to throw you a fastball, and you have to be quick with that bat. 
and hopefully make good contact. The center where Trout comes in to end the inning. The Twins get a leadoff walk and a follow-up single, but leave two runners on. You're watching the Twins and Angels, brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com for more. And photo use North Data Strong Fan, and you might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. To the third, no score. We didn't have any scoring until the sixth inning this afternoon. Efren Navarro, Taylor Featherston, and Eric Ibar will face Mike Pelfrey. From a strategic standpoint, were you a big fan of the contact play? Because it sure worked, worked well for the Angels this afternoon. More often than not, basically what you're telling the runner at third, as soon as it's, there's contact, you got to go. Yeah, I, I, I think that's been around for a long time, and you know you have to know who's at first, third, and the type of speed, and where the defense is playing, all that stuff. Stay out of the double play a lot of times. There's a contact play. Strike called one and one. Navarro up and down all season long with the Angels. Five different stents finally recalled on September 2nd. But it cracked his bat. He'll go back for a new one. One and two. He's been in the Angel organization a long time, nine seasons in the minor leagues, mainly a 300 minor league hitter. This year in Triple A, 72 ballgames hit 326. One and two. And inside. And up the middle, Dozier can't quite. Snag it on the backhand side, and Navarro's aboard with a leadoff single. Yeah, we've seen Brian go for that ball before, just like that, and then has to pop up and make a throw to first base. Ball just scooted by him. So Navarro picks up a base hit, third single off of Pelfrey. We'll see Brian a lot of times get ready, slide, and the ball underneath his glove. Three singles for the Angels, one each in three innings. When Ibar started the game on the first pitch with a single, Pelfrey got Calhoun to bounce into a double play. Here's Featherston squaring and taking ball one. Well, the Twins ended up 
dropping down a bunt. Try to advance two runners into scoring position in the bottom of the second. And now Featherston, the number nine batter, threatening the bunt. Yeah, he uh, put down a sac successful sacrifice in the seventh in, in game one. Featherston looking down at third base coach Gary DeSarcino. Former teammate of mine with the Angels. Shortstop. Along with Neil Heaton. He's another former <laughs> teammate of yours. He is in Cleveland now. Want to know? 2 0. Oh. If they're going to give you an out, you have to throw a strike. And that's basically what the Angels are doing right here with Featherston. Now, he may not be bunning. Three and zero. Oh. Houston scored three runs in the first, forcing Sonny Gray to throw 39 pitches in the first inning, and Houston has a three to one lead now in the second at Minute Maid Park. Ibar will hit next. Angels wanted to give the Twins an out, but now it's three and zero oh to the number nine batter. Three and one. Featherston's already had four hits in this series. Three hits here on Thursday night. One of them a two run home run. And then a base hit in game one this afternoon. Three and one to the number nine batter. Grounded to short. Nunez to Dozier. Quick relay to first. Save. At first base. And Paul Molitor up out of the dugout. That was a very nice play by Nunez. He had to go a little bit to his right and then get it to Dozier very quickly. Nunez shading him a little bit up the middle. He's got to go to his left. Quick turn over to Dozier. Perfect throw. Dozier getting rid of that ball quickly. We'll slow it down for you. Yeah, he was safe. And Paul Molitor backs down the dugout steps. So he fell behind Featherston 3 0, which eventually worked in the Twins' favor because the Twins got the out without the runner advancing. It's just a different runner at first now, Featherston for Ibar. Great strategy by Mike Pelfrey to fall behind 3 0, <laughs> cause them to take the bunt off. And then Featherston nearly hit into a double play. Down and in ball one. Not only the best athlete on the field, also the smartest. So cerebral. <laughs> Out thinking hitters all the time. And the managers. I mean, that was one of the great decoys we've seen here yes, lately. It, it was. Well played, Mike Pelfrey. Completely outfoxing Mike Sosha. Want to know? Featherston, what you do have is a uh, a guy that can steal some bases, four stolen bases in two attempts. He stole a base here in Game One. That was off of Kyle Gibson. And Pelfrey has a little bit higher leg kick than Gibson. Angels don't run a lot, but they again have stolen five bases in the first two games. I'm surprised the Twins have only allowed 21 more stolen bases than they've swiped themselves. But foul. It just seems like it's. Almost two for one, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. 
one and one. Well, Twins have stolen 64 bases. They have been caught 38 times. Opponents have stolen 83. They've been caught only 19 times. Yeah, the steal percentage is right. something that will need to be addressed. Yes. Too late this year, but next year. One and one. To Ibar. Dozier. Backhand to Nunez, and again they get the lead runner. Ibar fast enough to discourage even a relay throw. Two down. And it's Cole, uh, Cole Calhoun's turn. Twins take on the Indians starting Tuesday night here at Target Field. And Tuesday features the U.S. Bank Value Pack. You can purchase a U.S. Bank home run porch view ticket and receive a free Schweigert hot dog and Pepsi. Wednesday is student day presented by Rasmussen College. Standing room tickets just five bucks for students. And that includes a free ride on Metro Transit. Call 833 Twins or go to twinsbaseball.com for ticket information. Won't be long. Snow will be flying. Ice will be on the lakes. So there won't be baseball. I already have the chills. <laughs> uh, the changing of the seasons. That's why I'm a, a, a Minnesotan. You know, you have to embrace the weather changes. You don't embrace the weather changes? No. Now, you lived here. Yes, I since did. you started your broadcasting career, and of course, in your playing career, you lived here through some Minnesota yes, winters. Yes, I did. That's why I live in Florida. What a know. Now, when we started our broadcasting career together, you bought a house. You lived out in the western suburbs, sure and did. I, and I, I imagine you, you know. Snowmobiling and ice fishing and snowshoeing. Well, between Gail and I, we had four boys at the time that were between nine and fourteen, and uh, yeah, they, we had all the toys for them. And then it snowed. It was too cold. That's when it gets fun. Growing up in Southern California, marrying a girl from Florida, Minnesota is not the right place. 2 and 0 oh, to Cole Calhoun. Ibar trying to time him, stays at first. Fly ball on the left field line, and Rosario over a few steps. Right. And another good inning for yes. Mike Pelfrey. All right. Keep it going, Mike. Century Link, your link to what's next by NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. 
team with some chances to score. The Twins had their chance in the second after a leadoff walk and follow up single. We'll see what Brian Dozier can get done against Garrett Richards, second time he faces him. Dozier, Maurer, and Sano facing the hard throwing Garrett Richards. It's one of the great mysteries in life has been uh, solved thanks to Twitter. Someone on Twitter, and thank you very much. Uh, informing me that your brother Joe Blylevin played for the Quad Cities Angels, not the Cedar Rapids. Well, that's in Iowa, isn't it? Aren't they both yeah, in Iowa? Yes. Uh, yeah. Quad Cities, Davenport, Bettendorf, Moline, and Rock Island. Okay. Just a little bit south and east of Cedar Rapids. All I know is that when he signed with the Angels, his first bus ride was into Canada, and he told me <laughs> it was like 16 hours. <laughs> He didn't like it very much. When I would played about a year and a half. When I was in the Cedar Rapids as a sportscaster, I took a road trip with the then Cedar Rapids Reds, and I took a road trip to Wausau and Wisconsin Rapids. Ooh, high and tight. Corey Hunter got breezed in the second inning, and now Dozier takes one up two and two. Well, Richard, you can see it's all out effort right there. You see his head move a lot when he throws that ball. And his pitch delivered about four feet from the target that Ionetta had. Another one high and tight, three and two. Now, Richards issued his leadoff walk in the second, but got around the, without allowing a run. The last thing he wants to do is issue another leadoff walk here in the third. Full count to Dozier. And hit hard right into the shift on one hop. Second baseman that has happened to twice today to Brian. Once in the first game and once here in the third inning. And that'll bring up Bauer. Second longest streak in the Major League Baseball. He's reached a 38 straight. This afternoon it was a walk in front of Sano's home run that extended the streak. Struck out looking his first time up. And four pitches to Maurer, four strikes, only one swing. Joe took a breaking ball that looked like it was outside. Ionetta did catch it very well and he still got the call. On the ground to Ibar. Two down. So now with the plate drew a two out walk in the first. Richards five ground ball out so far one fly ball out to go with his two strikeouts. So Richards getting some ground ball. Off the bat of the twins. So now with a walk. His 42nd walk. Actually, 40 30 took an intentional walk this afternoon, and it surprised me to look it up and find it. That, that was his first intentional walk that he's drawn. All the others have been ostensibly unintentional. 1 0. And, and back to the mound, and Richards underhands it. And a quick 1 2 3 third inning for Garrett Richards.
uh, provides the positive, and that is a fresh arm with good velocity, which certainly makes the secondary pitches more effective. Um, there's always a potential of a little bit of rust when you're not out there for nine, ten days, but um, we're hoping that the, uh, the positives outweigh the negatives and that potential. Speaking of Mike Pelfrey, who's pitched three scoreless innings here, he's given up a single in each inning, he hasn't walked anybody, and has faced two men over the minimum. And I've seen the velocity as high as 96. Good slider right there to Mike Trout. Would you agree with the uh, assessment that Mike Pelfrey, unintentionally, of course, one strike to Trout on the ground, hit right at Dozier, down to a knee? That Mike Pelfrey's been kind of a tease to the Twins and their fans because they see. The velocity and they see some outing we saw saw them on a regular basis mm -hmm. in the first two months of the year and you think all right well it's finally come together for this guy he's a great guy in a clubhouse everybody you know likes his personality and all that but you know this is a six month season and and the twins have gotten one win from Pelfrey in his last 16 starts well, I'm going to defend Pelfrey a little bit coming off the Tommy John surgery and then having another surgery last year he, tried to he himself thought he maybe came back a little bit too quickly but this is kind of a rehab building year for him and I know he's a free agent at the end of the year but he's going to get about 170 180 innings in came into the ball game 152 depending on you know what the twins want to do that breaks Pujols hitless streak at 0 for 25 and he's aboard with one out in the fourth another hopefully Harmless single. And he does throw the ball in. <laughs> I tell you what, it, that man has been so great for the game of baseball. <laughs> Albert Pujols, he's a wonderful, engaging guy, and they did take the ball out of the game I'll for him. Don Baylor, right there. <laughs> Here's David Murphy with Pooh Holes aboard. Well, he just saw some of the fun in the game, too. That you respect the game when you go through slumps like Pooh Holes did. And finally, it's over. You can be a fierce combat, uh, competitor and still enjoy yourself on the field. Remember, this is going back a long time. Jock Jones was something like 0 for 20 against Mark Burley, and he got a, you know, a hit similar to that. It was like a seven hopper through the infield. Burley says, You want the ball? You want the ball? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One strike to David Murphy. Needn't worry about pool holes. He's not going anywhere with the bad foot. So you can focus on the hitter. If you need to take a little extra time, but you stretch. still have to make him stop. He does have four stolen bases in six attempts, and it's not someone that you just come set and not worry about. No, make him stop. But you don't need to try to rush your delivery no. or anything either. No. One and one. On the outside corner, one and two. And he's got to do that again. See if he can get another ground ball double play turn behind him. Fifty two pitches thirty three strikes a good strike percentage of sixty three. And spun foul over the screen. You know Murphy we're talking about Ibar Murphy one of these guys he doesn't strike out much yeah. you know he puts the ball in play in this day and age they, those guys really stand out. Mm -hmm. 16 strikeouts and 123 at bats for David Murphy. Come back. You ever play with Miguel DeLane? Yes, in Cleveland. I, I think he's the guy I'm thinking of. But I remember he had uh, when he was with the Indians a leadoff hitter, a slap hitter type of a guy. And he struck out like once every 25 at bats back then. And he was, you know, among the league leaders. Just a really tough guy to strike out. Man, if you had somebody like that on your team right now, it'd be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. One and two. And poke foul. I think he's the guy I'm thinking of. 
game has changed. Right now, Michael Brantley of the Indians is the hardest hitter in the American League to strike out, and he strikes out once every 12 at bats. Ben Zobrist is up there, Jose Altuve, and Ivar of the Angels. Another 1 2 pitch from Pelfrey. Two and two. And Brantley right up there with the uh, the batting average, highest batting average too in the American League, hitting coming into today's play 316. Cabrera coming into play, still leading at 337. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is what a, a guy can do when he doesn't strike out much. Make that pitcher throw seven, eight pitches in and that bat. Ooh. He's uh, had some close calls to throwing errantly over there. That throw even surprised Pujols and Maurer. So Murphy's flipped off some two strike pitches for fouls and now here he sits with a full count. Well, this will be pitch number nine coming toward home plate in this at bat. And in today's age of pitch counts you don't like facing guys like this. There goes Pujols and the pitch popped up Pujols slams on the brakes about two thirds of the way to second. Nunez with the catch two down. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Boys and Girls Clubs help young people reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens through programs that promote character and leadership, education, healthy lifestyles, and more. For more information, visit foxsportssupports.com. Two gone on the fourth. Belfry trying to pitch around another single, one each given up. In the first four innings, and now he'll face David Freeze, who singled with two outs in the second. In Freeze's case, he just topped the ball slowly toward Trevor Plouffe. That kind of an, a swinging butt that Plouffe really had no play. Um, slides to his right, ball one. Played again, 2 0. Freeze in his second season with the Angels, with the Cardinals for five seasons. All star for the Cardinals in 2012, the MVP in the World Series in 2011, when the Cardinals beat the Rangers. Now 3 0. As good as Pelfrey's done so far. When we get to this point, and there are a lot of people that hold their breath because there have been innings like this two outs, a guy on, and then suddenly walks, hit batters. Yeah, I don't know if he loses concentration, his release point, but we'll see this from time to time. He'll just fall behind and then have to come in. Pujols goes, Herman's throw on one hop right there to get him. Another good throw by Chris Herman, and the Angels did send Pujols. And instead of Pelfrey having to pitch with a three ball count to freeze, the Angels make the third out on the bases.
He's got a really good arm behind yes, the play. Yes, he player. does, and he showed it off right there. Sanford Health injury report: Brandon Belt of the Giants may miss the rest of the season, depending on what happens for the Giants here in the next few games. But he's dealing with concussion-like symptoms. And uh, on a related note, happy to see Justin Morneau back playing with the Colorado Rockies. Twins will hit here in the bottom of the fourth, middle of their lineup: Trevor Plouffe, Torrey Hunter, and Eddie Rosario. Plouffe with a shattered bat roller to Navarro at first to end the first inning. In ball one. High fly to center into the twilight. And Trout tracking it. Makes the catch one away. One away, Tory Hunter will hit and for more on Tory. Here's Kevin Gord. Yeah, guys, fun to catch up with Tory this morning. He had his lucky Notre Dame Irish Under Armour shirt on in anticipation of the big game at South Bend. Of course, his son, a wide receiver on the Notre Dame football team, his wife, and some of the family down there to support uh, his son in that endeavor and a battle of undefeateds. His son caught a ball today. Notre Dame prevailed over Georgia Tech 30 to 22. And Tory did say in between games he would have the TV on. He'd stay focused on the baseball, but certainly keep one eye on the uh, football game. And fun to see his son's team go to 3 and 0 this year. The Fighting Irish looking good. All right, thank you, oh, Kevin. Very nice. Hunter walked his first time up, ended up getting to third base, and then on a comebacker to the mound, he got trapped between third and home. That's that ball that Herman hit right back up the middle that kind of ricocheted off of uh, Richards, but he's able to flip it over to Ionetta to get uh, Torrey. One and two. Strikes out, four out number two. That fastball came running in on Torrey, and he Richards picks up his third strikeout. Rosario to the plate, and our uh, excuse me, a single his last time up. And our carsoup.com trivia question before Rosario, who was the last rookie to have 14 triples in a season, just a rookie, not a twins, not rookie. a twins rookie. But a great rookie season for Rosario and if you were to pick nits you'd say well maybe cut down on the strikeouts a little bit and all of that can be addressed with the likes of Rosario and Sano and Buxton maybe next year in spring training Rosario struck out over a hundred times to the left field corner chased by Murphy still running and he's there to make the catch. A one, two, three, four for Garrett Richards. No score here at Target Field.
fans of the game. Excited to be at Target Field. Hoping the Twins can break a little four game losing streak at home, which isn't little anymore. Always fun to uh, see the little ones here at any baseball game. Strike one. That's again, one been one of the frustrating things about this September losing streak is that all four games were very winnable, including the one this afternoon. Down and away, one and one. Freeze was at the plate with a 3 0 count when Pujols took off and was thrown out by Chris Herman. And uh, as we said, I think after our telecast this afternoon, the Angels got the winning run this afternoon without a hit, took advantage of a leadoff error, and ended up getting the winning run without a hit. And when things are going well for a team, they take advantage of another team's mistake or a break that they happen to get. And in this case, Pujols, with a dangerous hitter at the plate, ended up making a mistake by being thrown out at second on a 3 0 pitch. Let's see if the Twins can take advantage of that. Hope to the right field corner and foul. Two and two. So far so good for Mike Pelfrey has just given up four hits a single in each inning. Yet to walk a batter yet to have a strikeout. Strike three on a fastball that looked like it might have been off the plate one away and there's his first strikeout. And freeze has some words for Doug Eddings. See where this pitch was. Let me guess the pitcher's pitch. Well, it was right there, wasn't it? Yep. Pitch number five. Well, you see, Chris Herman wanted it inside, but it was out over the plate. But it was over the plate. Good call by Doug Eddings. Here's Chris Ionetta. Marcus Semyon's homered for Oakland. It's 3 2 Houston, top of the fourth inning. Check swing, strike one. Oh, watch out. Ionetta is getting hit by a pitch. And he wants to go to first. Pelfrey checking with him. Gets a pat on the back. I'm not sure where it hit him. And I think he got out of the way quick enough, and he's showing the Rick Smith, the trainer, that got him right on the left wrist area. Put some freeze on it. No, they don't do that anymore. And Ionetta was, you could see, actually raised his hands to help shield his face. And Ionetta with uh, a smile back towards Pelfrey, still concerned about status of the hitter, something I'm sure you showed great remorse for whenever you accidentally hit a batter. I never saw him stop running when they hit one back up the middle off of me. I always figure they had a split second to get out of the way. I had at first Navarro the batter singled his last time up. Down and in ball one. Twins being out hit here so far four to one. Pelfrey had some issues in the fourth inning after Pujols ground ball single. He fell behind Freeze 3 and 0, but then Pujols was thrown out trying to steal, and now a hit batter putting a man on. He's starting to fall behind on some of the Angel hitters, and uh, you know, have to stay aggressive in the strike zone. 70 pitches, 42 strikes. One and out of the Angel first baseman. There goes Ionetta, and the pitch chopped up the line foul. We saw it in Game One with uh, David Murphy up a little hit and run put on by yeah. Mike Sosha. 
That's definitely a hit and run right there with Ionetta, who is not a base stealer. Difference might be the guy at the play. We haven't seen much of Navarro, and Murphy's got thousands of major league at bats. And that pitch was a way that Gibson threw, and remember right. Murphy just went with it right down, down that left field line. One and one. Efren Navarro. Grounder in the first inning. We get another one here. There we go. Good call. Double play grounder. Inning over. Five shutout innings for Mike Pelfrey. We are in the pirate section of Target Field, also on the Minnesota State Lottery Winner Circle, 100 scratch-off tickets. It's National Talk Like a Pirate Day. Who knew? From Zimmerman, Sandy and her family are here. Now, if you're going to do this correctly and you're going to talk to Bert, who's going to circle you, you need to talk to Bert like a pirate. Arr, I just want to say hi to the scary dog, Bert. Bert, bye, love it. Guys, uh, it's quite the party up here. They're going to have 100 scratch-off tickets from the lottery. And to quote the great Jerry Seinfeld, I don't want to be a pirate. Oh, <laughs> Very nice, lady. Kevin. Oh, you were all here by circle. Zimmerman a little bit north of uh, Elk River. Fun at the ballpark. Eduardo Nunez bunted. Might have been bunting for a base hit. He got credit for a sacrifice when he pushed Hunter to third, Rosario to second. And there's strike one. Hack to the right side. Featherston gets there and Nunez retired one away. They got that nice little hop right at the end to uh, able to throw out Nunez at first. And this Twins Angels series is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Here's Chris Herman on the first pitch. He uh, hit a hard one hopper that hit Richards. And the deflection came down right in front of him, and that's what trapped Tory Hunter between third and home. Strike one.
One and one. Now Richards making his 29 starts this season, his 84th career start. Did some relieving when he first joined the Angels. What a grab by Navarro in the air on the backhand side a liner that might have been a double never got out of the infield. And Navarro kind of reaches out and gets that ball before it hits the turf for the second out. Twins fans here's how you can buy tickets to potential postseason games here at Target Field for the first time. On Wednesday, September 30th, the general public will be able to buy tickets to a potential wild card game as well as division series games played at Target Field. Beginning at 10 in the morning on the 30th, all you have to do is go to twinsbaseball.com and pick up your tickets to October. Tickets will be available online only. Ball one to Byron Buxton. Buxton with a fly ball to center his first time up. And now two and zero. Oh. Twenty three hits for Buxton in 116 at bats. Yeah, this was a count in his first at bat, and he got a fastball and he flew out to Trout in center field. Two and one. Foul back two and two. Thirty nine strikeouts, one hundred and sixteen at bats. About one every three at bats. And while the Twins are willing to let it ride with Sano in terms of the strikeouts because of his power, they envision Buxton being a higher on base guy. Hits, walks, fewer strikeouts, and Richards gets him with an off-speed pitch. And he has now retired 11 men in a row. By Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by McDonald's, the classic quarter pounder with cheese only at McDonald's. And right now, just three bucks. See, I like that. There's an Angels fan, a young fan who's got a scorecard. He's got it filled out and he's tracking the game and keeping the score. And I don't know how common that is now at the ballpark. I mean, if you want to, you can find out what uh, the batter, Eric Ibar, did in his, uh, or uh, Taylor Featherstone, I should say. Did you keep score as a kid? Yeah, I did, but I didn't have a cell phone back then. 
<laughs> we were on a party line back then. Featherston uh, retired and he's making his entry. But now you want to find out what Eric Ibar did. Yeah, you could just look at your phone. You don't have to keep score. Yeah, but that, that's a lot of the fun of. Uh, yeah. I used to growing up. I'd listen to uh, you know Vin Scully and Jerry Doggett with the Dodgers. And especially with Colfax and Drysdale, right. and I would sit there with my little scorebook by the radio and keep score. One down, I bar single, reached on a fielder's choice. The bunt foul. Pelfrey's given the Twins everything they could have hoped for to this point. 75 pitches, and he's gotten 16 outs. Twins haven't scored them a run yet. Twins pretty much cut through their bullpen this afternoon in losing. Perkins, May, Fiend, Boyer, Jepson, and Tonkin all pitched. Some of those guys would be eligible to come back here tonight, certainly. And who knows, maybe even Perkins in a save situation. Perkins just faced one batter. Mm -hmm. But uh, the greatest fear for tonight's game was that Pelfrey would not pitch deep into the ball game and you got to try to get well, through tomorrow's game too. That's one thing that Paul was worried about, and also Neil Allen was the you know long time between outings. But hey, he hasn't walked anybody. He's doing a good job attacking the strike zone. Over 60 percent of his pitches have been over the plate, and he's given up only four hits, all of them singles. Oh, two fastball, chest high, but over the plate. He, uh, Oakland's tied Houston by the way 3 3 in the fourth inning after the Astros got three in the first against Sonny Gray. Both the Astros and the Twins seem to be going through a similar phase right now. Close ball games. Astros are home now too. They lost a tough ball game last night. Were swept by the Rangers on the road. Yeah, Houston's lost five in a row coming into today's play. Two and two to Eric Ibar. And a foul. Another two strike foul by Ibar. And the Angels had the best record in the American League last year with 98 wins and a lot of things from the very beginning. Went wrong this year for the Angels. General manager dismissed Jerry Depoto. Old Josh Hamilton situation that saw Hamilton ending up back with the Texas Rangers. Two and two. Another foul. And of course, you sorted injuries and things that happen to everybody. Well, Angels and Twins with the same record, 75 and 72. And it was a lot more fun for the Twins when there was just one team to shoot for. That's what makes this game tonight so important. Put the Angels at least for a night behind the Twins again. And Ibar with a great at bat, just slapped the ball to left field, not unlike his first inning single. The Angels have had one base runner, exactly one base runner on in every inning. Uh, again, I bar one of those hitters. He's tough to strike out and puts the ball in play. And two singles to left field. Every weeknight, don't miss MLB Whip Around on Fox Sports 1 with highlights, instant analysis, live look ins from around the league. MLB Whip Around, weeknights at 6 p.m. Central on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Paul Calhoun bounced into a double play after Ibar's single in the first, then a fly ball to left. Yeah, in the first inning, Pelfrey threw over, tried to keep Ibar close probably four or five times. Ibar with 12 stole, stolen bases on the year and 17 attempts. Kick and a base hit to right. First time the Angels have had two runners on. Ibar will shoot for third. Here's Hunter's throw coming through. Safe. The runner at first holding. And Torrey's throw up the line off the base just a little bit. If it had been right on top of the base, they would have gotten him. 
Well, the speed of Ibar right there, the aggressive base running. When the Angels were really good, they had a whole group of guys that would go from first to third in a heartbeat, no matter where that ball was. And so Ibar challenged Torrey Hunter, and he makes it to third safely. And now first and third, one away, and Trout the batter. Trout's hit the ball on the ground twice, and Pelfrey will try to make it a third time. Very fast out of the box, not the easiest guy to double up. But he is very strikeout prone. Box tracks presented by Ram. To Nunez. And I'm not sure Trout hit that ball any less hard than he did his grand slam two nights ago. Boy, he hit a bullet to Nunez for the second out. Nunez was playing him perfectly. Two down, two on, and now Pools the batter. Anyway, Trout, look at this ball. Wow. Didn't Take long to get to Nunez. Very similar to the line drive that Escobar didn't see, and ended up deciding uh, the game one or game one in the twelfth inning today. Pujols with a ground ball single, breaking an old for twenty-five skid, longest of his career. Good speed on the bases. Ibar at third. Calhoun at first. I think, would you, that the Angels would be too aggressive with Calhoun here? Who holds at the plate? Drilled to the gap in left center. Pujols with back to back hits. It'll score one. Calhoun to third. They're going to wave him around. And Nunez with a throw to the plate, not on time. And Albert Pujols with a two run double, breaking the ice in the sixth. Well, jumping on that first pitch, Pujols, as you mentioned, Dick, 0 for 23, got his base hit, then got a pitch up and just lined it in the left center. Picks up RBIs, number 84 and 85. Ball right there, right down the heart of the plate. I bar scores, and then Calhoun with two outs. He's off with a crack of the bat, and he's quick enough to scoop all the way over from first base and score the second run of the inning. Now, David Murphy, ball one. It was a sixth inning in game one when the Angels put two on the board against Kyle Gibson. Lane Boyer, Neil Cox, Boyer pitched this afternoon. Cox did not. Mentioned it this afternoon. Last year in early September, the Angels came to Target Field and won. All four games in a series. Only won the first two and are leading in the third. That's to center. And Buxton coming in. He won't get there. The ball will land. Pujols trying to score, and it's three to nothing. A little chip shot between Nunez and Buxton. And the Angels get two big three out hit or two out hits here in the sixth. And a little dying quail right there by Murphy picks up an RBI as 44. Yeah, the Angels have actually won 11 of the last 12 games these teams have played against each other, dating back to last year. Yeah, just a little flare. Nunez out of his reach. Buxton can't get it with two outs, even though Pujols' feet are killing him. He scores. And now David Freeze. One. 
dream. What was he at 75 pitches and he had 16 outs? Another 12 pitches and there's only one more out on the board. And three runs. And that's how quick it can happen. On the right field and Hunter toward the gap for the third out. You're watching the Twins and Angels brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com for more. And Color Watch along the St. Croix, one of the most beautiful rivers in North America. Visit the Parks and the Forests page on ExploreMinnesota.com and discover a world that's only in Minnesota. Share and tag your Minnesota fall experiences with hashtag only an MN. St. Croix, widely considered one of the best canoeing rivers in the nation, one of the most peaceful, immersive ways to experience Minnesota's fall color show is paddling a canoe between the densely wooded banks of the St. Croix. Used to spend uh, some time on the St. Croix in the spring catching some walleye and sauger. Did you ever canoe? Oh, used to a lot. Did yes, you? in north central Minnesota. We used to uh, canoe down the uh, Crow Wing River. Never, and, never and canoed. Seriously? No. Well, I, I think you should go, just not with me. Because I don't <laughs> want anybody in the canoe with me who doesn't know what they're doing or isn't willing to help. All you do is row, don't you? Yeah, well, but you got to, you know, one side the other. You got to steer in the back, and all that. I don't. Somebody take Bert canoeing and let me know how it goes because I'm not doing it. <laughs> one and one to Dozier. Can you do it during the winter? <laughs> it's harder to paddle. <laughs> Two and one. Well, the Twins have some work to do here. Now down three to nothing. And Richards has given up only one hit. And the Twins tried to bunch some things together against him in the second. Hunter got a leadoff walk, Rosario with a single. And since then, he's retired 12 men in a row. Two and two to Dozier, then Maurer, then Sano. Call, third strike. One away. And Dozier going down on strikes for the second time. For Richards, strikeout number five. Like the hard breaking ball straight over the top. Curveball. Tight rotation. We'll see that tomorrow from uh, Tyler Duffy for the Twins. One down and now Maurer hitless today. Did draw a walk in the first game. Strike one, that quicker breaking ball again, a cutter, I guess. Half swing. 
swing but strike two. Yeah that more the cutter right there just kind of looks like a slider just to, that's all difference between a calls a cutter today basically I think when we played it was a slider. Mariano Rivera had a cutter that would move only about six seven inches. Slider breaks a little bit bigger. Taken low on a two. Yeah, Richards, good size for a pitcher, 6'3, about 215, and does a good job of getting to that balance point and then really explodes off of that pitching rubber. All out effort right there. Chopper to short. High bar on the run, flips the first, two down. That'll bring up Sano. Zubas Palooza coming back to target field. Twins have a special offer, including a reserve seat for the game Friday, October 2nd, when the Twins take on the Kansas City Royals. And you'll get your very own limited edition Minnesota Twins Zubas pants. Take advantage of the special offer available exclusively by logging on to twinsbaseball.com slash Zubas. Ball one, this young man in half a season roughly has already caused people to change their behavior at the ballpark. Dozier comes to the plate. People are talking to each other, watching their phones, whatever. Bauer comes to the plate. You know, I mean, they're paying attention to the game as they should, but they're distracted. I get the sense just in watching people here that when he comes to the plate, people are locked in on what's happening. Two and one. Well, there's no check swing with this guy. I mean, <laughs> it's all out effort. If you throw that ball in the zone where that bat is, it's going to go a long way, as it did in game one, 453 feet. Now, they might be using their phones to actually take pictures. Two and two. Well, phones now have videos, too. Yes. So you can video it. Yeah. Swing and a miss. And another 1 2 3 inning for Garrett Richards. He now has a 3 0 lead through six. In the six. Well, we had a pitcher's duel again, like we did in game one for five good innings. Richards has been outstanding. He has retired 15 straight twins since Rosario got the twins only hit in the second inning. Because Albert Pujols, who put the Angels on the board last inning on a two run double, then David Murphy followed with an RBI single that scored Pujols. Angels will send the bottom third of their lineup. Chris Iannetta, who was hit in the hand by a pitch the last time he saw Pelfrey. Big swing and a miss, strike one. 
Well, he's gotten two ground ball double plays, but he could not get one in the sixth when he really needed one. Gave up instead four hits and three runs. Put Pelfrey's two starts, last two starts together, and you've got 11 and a third innings and four runs. And I think the Twins would take that if they figured they could count on that. Foul back. One of the issues, though, has been Pelfrey's reliability today in the afternoon game. There were situations, I suppose, where if the Twins weren't concerned about Pelfrey's duration here tonight, they might have used Phil Hughes. Uh, in a situation or two this afternoon, and I ran out of pitching towards the end, or at least veteran pitching. Bullpen did fine until the 12th. In the air, and open the door for the Angels. And as good teams do when given a break, they took advantage of it. One and two. Well, Palfrey making his 28th start. The Twins are 14 and 13 when he starts a ball game. There's Phil Hughes. He's now in the bullpen. And it'll be interesting to see if they're going to use Phil Hughes. He's going to have to have probably about 10, 15 minutes to get loose. Not accustomed to relieving. Ionette has just hit his fourth home run this year against the Twins. Ten on the season. And four in just a handful of games against Minnesota. And that home run right there, his 100th in his career. It's 10th home run of the year. And it's a fastball in, and Ionetta again came into the ball game hitting only 185, but he does have this. A lot of power. Ionetta has driven in eight runs against the Twins. He's hit 500 against them with a lot of power, and that one reached the second deck. To make it four to nothing. And Pelfrey hit Ionetta in the fifth. And then Ionetta hit Pelfrey in the seventh. It's four to nothing. A quick trip to the mound and an exit for Mike Pelfrey. North is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Beautiful night at Target Field, but the score rather unpleasant. Four to nothing, Angels. Yeah, it's not beautiful right there. Four zip Angels and Mike Pelfrey. Uh, five innings was really good. Then he kind of I don't know if he ran out of gas. Just left some pitches up. Pujols got a ball right down the heart of the plate that he hit for the two-run double. And then his ball came back into uh, that strong swing he has. And that's bringing in Neil Kotz. He did not pitch in game one, making his 12th relief appearance. He did pitch here on Thursday night. Did give up a home run to Ionetta. The only uh, run he allowed in the inning that he worked here on Thursday night. One strike. 
to Efren Navarro. Fouled back. Two strikes. Yeah, two times through the order, and that's not the first time we've seen Pelfrey struggle with the third time. First two times through the order, everything was fine. Now the third time, the Angels are five for seven against him. Ball one, one and two. Well, I think he went out there for that inning that, you know, okay, you had a bad sixth inning. Just give us one more inning. The bullpen used a lot as of late. And with the Ionetta home run, Molitor decided to remove Pel Pelfrey. Half swing, I think he went. Strike three. Navarro's gone for the first out. As promised to you earlier in the game, we've selected the Data Strong Fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to North Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Steve, thanks for the photo. Like Blaine Boyer a little bit. <laughs> One down in the seventh, and now Taylor Featherston. Oakland's taken a 4-3 lead, 5-3 lead over Houston in the fifth inning. Astros took an early 3-0 lead. Remember last night it was a 3-0 lead. And then Danny Valencia hit a couple of home runs. He's hitting cleanup for the Oakland A's. And he's swinging the bat like a cleanup hitter. Outside, 1-1. One and one. Michael Tonkin, who finished the ball game this afternoon, warmed up. Followed back just beneath us. And there's isn't much no, that is beneath There is and not. One and two. Potts getting traded over to the Twins from the Brewers back in late August. This one popped up. And Herman watches it go over the screen. Twins won the opening game of the homestand against the Tigers. They've lost a couple of tough ones and now have lost a couple of tough ones to the Angels to start this series. One and two. And one and three. Two down. And Koch comes in and picks up a couple quick strikeouts. Featherston taking that little cutter inside for strike three. White Sox leading the Indians three to one in the sixth inning. The Indians putting a little pressure on the Twins as well. Getting back to the 500 mark. Strike one. And the Twins have seven more games with the Indians. They'll be starting a three game series here on Tuesday as the Indians come into town. One strike. Two strikes. And now. This is where I borrow go to work. As a right handed batter against Cots. A good average hitter from both sides of the plate. And there's the first two strike foul. Cheap road ahead. Another game tomorrow against the Angels on a day off, and then that's that's what's left of the season. Mm -hmm. Twins have 13 games left after tomorrow, and seven of them against Cleveland. And then the Twins hope either game 163 or a wild card game. On the ground, push to right field, and another hit for Ibar. He has three hits, and he hasn't pulled the ball at all tonight. Every hit's gone to the opposite field. Yeah, first two hits is a left-handed hitter off of Pelfrey to left field. That one right there just spotted off 
down that gap. And that's what Brian Dozier needs to do right there. That's a yeah, I mean right there Dozier was shading him up the middle and Ibar just went with it. Took it the other way. And I think you know we're talking about a guy like Ibar it's been in the big leagues for 10 years and Dozier well, his second full season with the twins. Here's Calhoun. And a pop up. And a fan in front of us. She's Young lady. A, yeah, the guy who ended up with a ball yeah. had a couple of balls come right by him, and the young lady had deflected it to him. Yeah, her hands are sore. She's shaking her hands. And now one and one. Calhoun singled and scored in the sixth. Mike Pelfrey got the first out of the sixth. And somebody up here just commanded him on pitching a good ball game. 16 outs, 75 pitches. Mm -hmm. And then it all fell apart. Who was that? So you or me? I believe it was you. Yeah, I think it was. But I'll take the credit too. <laughs> we go down together. Oakland leading Houston six to three now. They're still batting in the fifth inning. Texas rolls along. They're leading Seattle three to one. Two and one. Well, Cox has thrown 16 pitches, 12 strikes. Struck out the first two batters he faced. Got ahead of high bar, 0 and 2, before giving up a two strike single. Throw nearly took the cap off of Cots. A nice pickup by Nunez. Herman cranked and threw the ball right over Cots. Didn't clear his head by too much at all. Herman threw out a runner earlier. Hey, he threw out Pujols in the fourth inning, but Ibar gets a stolen base, his 13th of the year. As a pitcher, and you have a guy behind a plate like Herman, you better get down, and that's what Koch did. And Nunez shot short hopping that throw. And Ibar leading the Angels in stolen bases. And a strikeout ends the inning. A home run started it. Chase Mike Pelfrey. Koch got the three of the next four batters and it's four to nothing.
back to July of 2007. Joe Maurer at the plate against the Angels' Scott Shields. Joe sent one deep over Gary Matthews Jr., who went into the wall. Maurer kept on running a three-run homer inside the park, the first by a twin since Torrey Hunter in 2001. Twins might need some of that. Something here to get going. They're down four to nothing. Bottom of the seventh. Ploof, Hunter, and Rosario will hit against Garrett Richards. Twins. And Richards has retired 15 straight twins since Rosario's base hit. Only twins hit in the second inning. There goes one off the bat of Trevor Ploof. That into the second deck, and the twins are on the board. It's four to one. Well, again, it was Trevor Plouffe who hit a home run off of Richards when Richards lost to the Twins three to nothing in Anaheim. So home run number 21 for Trevor Plouffe. He has something for the fans to cheer about here. All right, fastball. Plouffe do it. Richards knew it. Twins have now hit 143 home runs in 148 games. Bouncer to high bar, perfect throw across, one away. Twins have hit the most home runs in the American League Central. They have still been out homered on the season. Twins have given up 153 and hit 143. Carsoup.com trivia question. The last rookie to have 14 triples in a season. Any guesses? Willie Wilson. Ray Lankford. And Rosario takes ball one. A breaking ball down and in. Twins at the start of this series. Jumped on the Angels five to nothing. In the first inning, we saw the Angels come back. And in the games that have followed, the Angels have jumped out first, and the Twins haven't been able to get over the top. They've tied the Angels a few times, including this afternoon, but haven't been able to take the lead. They've got to find a way to get something done here in the final three innings. Chop foul one and two, and it figures if the Twins come back and win this game. Or force extra innings that Sano will be a big part of it. Luke getting the twins on the scoreboard with a home run to the second deck. One out, one and two to Rosario. And Rosario waves at an off-speed pitch. Two down. That looked like a breaking ball away and strikeout number seven in the ball game for Richards. You can establish 2015 postseason priority by buying next year's season tickets. Don't miss an inning of postseason play and experience exclusive sweet spot benefits like 10% off food and beverage at Target Field. For more info or to place a deposit, call 612-375. 7454 or visit twinsbaseball.com slash season tickets today. Nunez the batter. So much for throwing Richards off his rhythm. And a couple of quick outs after the home run. And now Nunez on one hop sends it to Ibar. And the twins are done on the seventh. They got on the board with the blue home run. It's four to one.
run is 81st RBI. That's a career high for him. And this copy right of telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. Now, that had never happened, of course, but do you think you could read that? Three times in one game. If there were a triple header, could you read that three times I in think one game? I might be able to. I hope I never have to. Phil Hughes will pitch out of the bullpen. Of course, in his Yankee days, he was both a reliever and a starter. Twins ran him out there. His first appearance after coming off the disabled list, the results weren't all that good. We'll see whether he. Has any more success as a reliever? And this is kind of the role that uh, you know Paul Molitor and uh, Neil Allen see Phil right now. And that, of course, is a disappointment. The Twins were hoping that that uh, Hughes and Santana and Alaska would all be leading this team from where they were in the final month of the season, leading the rotation. alasco has been hurt most of the year. Hughes just off the disabled list. And Santana, of course, didn't help at all in the first half. He's about the closest thing, along with Kyle Gibson, that the Twins have to being a reliable starter. And then the All Star closer Perkins went down as well. Well, and that's one thing that Neil Allen has, has said, along with Paul Molitor, is you know, as these games are so important, he's got to go with the raw hot hand. You can't have your fourth and fifth starters right now starting ball games when maybe you have an off day to push everybody up a day. And one of the things that was disappointing about Hughes's start was the velocity. Well, that was a fastball clocked at 90, and when Phil won 16 games last year, we saw 94. And it just hasn't been there. One and two. Breaking ball lifted foul. A big slow curveball. Hughes did start here last Tuesday against the, the Detroit Tigers worked only three innings gave up three runs ended up getting a loss in a 5 4 loss to the Tigers through 65 pitches in the three innings. They're hoping he can get at least five innings in. One and two. Two and two. So much of pitching is your leg strength to drive off of that rubber, uh, pitching rubber. We talked about Richards, the way that he pushes off high and deep to left center field. Buxton chasing it. He won't have a play. And what I've seen from Phil Hughes, he's not really driving off of that rubber, uh, that pitching rubber. And Mike Trout hitting home run number 30. Nine on the year, his third in this series so far. The ball just keeps carrying when he hits it well. Yeah, but look at the location of this pitch. It's right there. And Mike Trout hitting it straight away with all that power. Career high, 39 home runs now for Trout, who had 36 last year. Swing and a miss by Pujols. Ended an 0 for 20. Five skid with a ground ball single up the middle in the fourth, and then a ringing two run double to left center field in the sixth. Popped up, and it'll reach the seats. I know Phil Hughes has had that bad back, and that's why he was on a disabled list. But again, you drive off of that pitching rubber. And well, that just sounds to me like somebody whose back might not be 100% yet. I mean, you yeah. you. Anybody who's had any back issues at all, it affects your legs, it affects everything. But it's, you know, the Twins, one of the surprise teams in baseball, and ultimately what may take them out of the race is an ability, but durability. You've got to have your best players on the field. Now, if something happens on the field, and somebody gets hit by a pitch and they crack a knuckle or something. Well, that's going to happen. The short left and Rosario comes in. And those are very unfortunate. But well, you, you've, this is a team that had a deep rotation at the start of the year. And now in September, they're trying to patch things together. 
And Hughes is not a part of the rotation. Right. One down. And now Murphy. Murphy with an RBI single in the sixth. Popped up near third. Ploof behind the third base bag. Slams out the brakes out number two. Every weekday, America's pregame brings you live reports from the biggest games to get you ready for all the action. Catch America's pregame at 4 p.m. Central, only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Two down. You know, at the end of the game, Kevin Jepson's done a great job as the closer, but that's not why he was obtained. He was obtained to pitch in the seventh and eighth inning along with Trevor May. And so Perkins is gone for a while, and Jepson fills in that void very admirably, but then there's, you know, Twins have lost some games. Because of runs scored in the seventh and eighth inning. Right. Yeah, when uh, you know a key reliever like Perkins went down, it kind of pushes everybody up, and then you do you you isolate on the sixth and seventh innings that end up losing ball games. Freeze the batter. Well, all that said, Twins still hoping to come back and win this game. But if they don't and can win yesterday, they'll be tied with the Angels. This game does require a short memory. And when you've lost a 12 inning game in the opening game of a doubleheader, it really requires you to have a short memory. The Angels, for whatever reason, have played very well here and very successfully. Two and two. Another leadoff home run. Angels got one in the seventh again in the eighth. You're watching the Twins and Angels brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com for more. After the game for Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink, we'll break down another big night for one of the big boppers in the lineup for the Los Angeles Angels tonight. It was Albert Pujols that made a big difference. We'll show you why Garrett Richards was so hard to hit for the Minnesota batters. And we'll take you inside the clubhouse and hear from Paul Molitor and the adjustments he can make to change the vibe around here, guys. And as bad as it feels, and it feels bad right now and very bleak, Houston losing again. So if these scores both hold up, the Twins would still wake up tomorrow just a game and a half back. It'd sure be nice. They could find a way for one of those magical rallies that we've seen here at Target Field earlier this summer. We'll see what uh, will happen here with the Twins sending up Danny Santana to hit for Chris Herman. Thank you very much. The Astros 
in one series. Take a look at uh, the defensive changes for the Angels. Cowgill is in left. Yep. And the Cows are in. Coward at third. Santana with a two hopper picked up by Navarro. He gets to the bag. Santana retired. Well, Richards has really been tough here tonight. It's only made if you call him a mistake. Eddie Rosario with a base hit and then the high fastball to Trevor Plouffe. That's been it. Byron Buxton will be lifted for a pinch hit. And Aaron Hicks will hit instead. Talking about the Astros in their most recent series with Texas, they lost the division lead. And by the end of their series with Oakland, they may lose the wild card spot. They're losing streak one game longer than the Twins. One and zero oh to Hicks. Aaron in center field in game one. O oh for four with a bunt. Excuse me, O oh for five. One and one. What the uh, Angels have right here is a future ace of that staff in Richards. He was off to a great start until August when he broke his leg, his left knee tore it up, that knee surgery. One and two. Win here today would be his 14th win of the year. And the pitch count very good at 88 here with one out in the eighth inning. What we've seen is stuff. You know, 97 miles per hour, good breaking ball, the ability to change speeds. High chopper, Richards fields and fires a throw. It's out number two. Follow live Twins baseball every day with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected to the Twins all season with MLB.tv game of the day in game highlights live look ins replay reviews radio broadcasts and more browse the apps new features including stat cast tracking videos and bilingual access for Spanish speaking fans download MLB.com at bat the number one app for live baseball. Two down and Brian Dozier has struck out twice gone over three against Richards. Twins with just two hits. Rosario's single in the second, and Blue's home run in the seventh. Yeah, a couple keys, you know, for the Twins for tomorrow. This guy right here, Brian Dozier, only three hits in his last 21 at bats. He needs to pick it up a little bit, get on base, because he's kind of one of the igniters. He and you know Mauer's job to get on base, which he's been able to do, but also drive in runs. Two and zero. Oh. And now three and oh Mauer on deck. And a four pitch walk. And Mauer to the plate. Yeah, third walk for Richards, the first walk since the second inning when Torrey Hunter drew a leadoff walk. Mauer called out on strikes in the first. A couple of ground balls are short. Strike one. And the 
after dug out by Ionetta. Yeah, nice, uh, nice block right there by Ionetta, keeping the ball in his glove, ball landed in front of home plate. We've seen that three or four times in this ball game. Richards will bounce that breaking ball in front of home plate. Richards does have he does have 15 wild pitches on the season. I believe that having seen so many breaking balls in the dirt. One and one. Two and one. So no on deck. You'd like to get something done here in the eighth, so you're not going to whittle down the mountain a little bit for the ninth inning. And you can score runs with two outs as well as one. Yes, you out. can. Angels got their three runs in the six with two out hits. A wild pitch and a, and a good one. Yeah, that got Ionetta pretty good right on that wrist that uh, Mike Pelfrey got him earlier in the ballgame. At bat, shaking off that left hand. Sixteenth wild pitch of the year for Richards, most in the American League. And Bozier moves to second. Mike Butcher to the mound. Yeah, Richards, 29 start. He has one complete game. That a shutout earlier this year. And that shutout coming just before he lost to the Twins back on July 18th in Anaheim. He shut out the Boston Red Sox 3 0. A two hit shutout, the second career shutout. Three and one to Bauer with Sano on deck. Seven and shave the corner. Joe is ready to unbuckle his shin guard and go to first. Take a look at it. Where was uh, it? Joe has an outstanding eye at the plate. Let's see what Fox oh, Tracks right says. There. It was a good pitch. Fox Tracks presented by Carrier. Three and two. There is ball four. Back to back walks probably will be the end of the day for Garrett Richards with Sano coming up. Sano 0 for 2 with a walk against Richards. No move for Mike Sosha yet. Well, Richards, a guy that they'll let go, you know, 105, 110 pitches in a ball game. Back to back two out walks though that's not good. Got a four run lead. Well, he's one of your aces you go with him. Laced to left field. Dozier to third he'll be held. And the twins get the tying run to the plate now and Trevor Plouffe who homered his last time up against Richards. Well, only the third hit for the ball game. That ball hit so sharply to Cowgill in left field that Brian Dozier had to hold up at third. Bluff caught up with a high fastball and planted it in the second deck. Well, this measured at 396 feet, a high fastball that Bluff. Into the second deck. Oh, I got 
tell you, I'm amazed. They're not going to make a pitching change. Twins have three grand slams this year. They have given up nine. Two of the three the Twins have hit have been off the bat of Trevor Plouffe. Angels didn't have anybody warmed up. And now Plouffe takes strike one, a breaking ball or that cutter. And Plouffe thought it was inside. Trevor hitting 533, 8 for 15 with three doubles, a couple home runs with bases loaded. 22 runs batted in. One strike. Tamper headed door toward the middle. Now Ibar flips to second, and they got Sano to end the inning. Twins fill the bases with two outs, don't score, and it's still a five to one ball game. Middle and Sano and Ibar almost missed that ball by flipping that ball over to Featherston, but able to get Sano at second. Some defensive changes. Aaron Hicks, who pinched hit for Buxton, stays in center field, and Eric Fryer now catching. And Phil Hughes delivers to Ionetta, delivers strike one. In each game today, the game was scoreless through five. There's a ball lifted to right, playable for Hunter. And in each game, the Angels scored first in the top of the sixth. Twins forced extra innings, tying the game this afternoon, but losing in 12. And now the Angels adding a couple of solo home runs to start the seventh and eighth innings. One down. We'll bring up Navarro. Bill Hughes in his second inning of relief. Sharp ground ball hit right at Nunez. Two quick outs. And now Taylor Featherson. Well, Logan Darnell still out with that, uh, you know, illness, to pneumonia, but. This is where Phil Hughes can help out, you know, trying to, I don't want to call them mop up innings, but innings that are taken away are, are not needed from some of the guys that are needed in situations that are used to being in the seventh and eighth inning and ninth inning. Well, unless the Twins have extra innings, assuming Hughes completes the ninth here, the Twins will at least, and this is not. A silver lining by any means, but at least they didn't use the same relievers in both games. Right. 
There's a game tomorrow, a day game tomorrow, and it might be Tyler Duffy that might get this thing going again. He's been pitching well. Houston's made it close now with Oakland at 6 5, bottom of the sixth. Houston still batting. And now Dozier to his left. And Hughes faces seven men, gives up the home run to start his night, and then gets the next six men. in danger of dropping their fifth straight home game. Garrett Richards out there to try to get a complete game win. He ran into some two out difficulty in the eighth inning with a couple of walks and then a Sano single but he got Plouffe and now he'll face Hunter Rosario and Nunez. Inside ball one. Oh, fastball still there that last fastball 96. Side corner called one and one. You see the second pitch brushing the edge of the strike zone, according to Fox Tracks. Fouled away, one and two. Well, and the most pitches uh, Richards has thrown in a ball game this year, 117. That came four starts ago against the Cleveland Indians in Cleveland. That was seven innings worth of work. He has three complete games. One shutout this year. Three complete games in his career. And up around the hands again. They've really worked Tory inside. At least Richards has. All the pitches middle in. Drilled to center and Trout will play it on a hop. Another late game single for Hunter who started the 12th inning this afternoon with a base hit. Hey, so all the pitches inside and then Richards goes one right over the plate and Torrey lines it in the center. Four of the last five batters have reached now against Richards. Here is Eddie Rosario. Rosario singled back on the second. Since then, a fly ball and a strikeout. Yeah, Richard. 
Richards looking over, but uh, Navarro playing behind Tory Hunter. Up and away, ball one to Rosario. Started a rally in the eighth, but they started it with two outs. Now Hunter with a leadoff single in the ninth. Tap foul, one and one. These things decay a little bit more for the Angels. Houston Street getting loose. the pitching coach Sosha Mike Sosha giving Richards every opportunity to complete this game so we got a foul and it's two and two if one more batter reaches then it becomes a save situation. Tying run would be on deck. Chopper to first. Navarro to the bag. One down. It'll bring up Nunez, but first a century link. Look to what's next. Matt Shoemaker will go for the Angels and Tyler Duffy. Asked to uh, do basically what he's done in every start since his major league debut, and that is give the Twins a really good chance to win. Yeah, you know what? Other than his major league debut over his last six starts, 3 0 with a 2.45 ERA. So, yeah, the Twins need a good quality start out of uh, Duffy tomorrow. There's Nunez. Vargas has come out onto the on deck circle. Fouled away. Behind Nunez, a scheduled batter is Fryer, but he'll be pinch hit for it. And the Twins, if there is a tenth inning, will go to Suzuki to catch the tenth. One strike to Eduardo Nunez. Over the inside corner, two strikes. 114 pitches into his night, and that's still a 95 mile per hour fastball. He definitely has the arm strength. Two strikes to the twin shortstop. And got an off speed pitch and got a piece of it. Two strikes to Nunez. He's trying to put together some kind of a rally here in the ninth. Grounder right side and under the glove of Featherston. Hunter will be held and Nunez gets a one out single. Now it's a save situation and we will probably see Houston Street. Yeah, Mike Sosha starting to move around down in their dugout. Houston Street is up. Nunez kind of fought this pitch off right there and just took it the other way. Featherson 
dove for the ball and scooted by him in the right field. And again, I'm surprised they're going to let it ride. Vargas, who faced Street this afternoon in the 12th inning, faces him tonight in the ninth. Swing and a miss, one strike. Down and in, and Nunez goes to second. We stay out of a double play. Vargas pinched hit against Street in the 12th inning. Street struck him out. And Vargas, as a pinch hitter, one for nine. Tying run is Hicks. He's on deck. And a foul. One and two. Well, season high in innings pitch for Richards. Pitch number 120 coming. One out here. Vargas trying to get on base. Find something he can drive here in the ninth. And he took ball two. Angels have only two complete games on the year. One by Richards, the shutout against the Boston Red Sox, and the other one by Jarrett Weaver. And that was a shutout. Two and two to Vargas. Jack did swing three and two. Well, Twins have gotten five men on in the last seven plate appearances, and now it's a full count to Vargas to bring the tying run to the plate. Full count to the pinch hitter. To the first baseman, a run will score. And Navarro gets out number two. Hunter coming in from third, and it's five to two. Yeah, Vargas will pick up an RBI. Vargas is 17th run batted in as Torrey Hunter scores. And now the pitching move will be made. Mike Sosha coming out to get Garrett Richards. He got 26 outs, but he won't get the 27th. Twins hoping there's more of a comeback to come. Here in the bottom of the ninth, but they're down by three.
available for some reason today because Houston Street will be asked to get the last out only in the ninth inning after getting the save this afternoon. And you know he threw 20 pitches in that uh, save his 37th this afternoon in the uh, 12 inning 4 to 3 Angels win. And I bet you 15 of the 20 were changeups. The last 15. <laughs> He threw one changeup after another. Well, he's leading the American League with 37 saves. Houston Street. And for Aaron Hicks, the job find a way. Get on base. Keep the game alive. Brian Dozier's on deck. Outside ball one. Talked about it this afternoon. Street and that uh, awful blown save Sunday against the Astros, and then got sick. He was actually sick during uh, his outing on Sunday. Big swing and a miss, and didn't pitch at all in the Seattle series. Got the save here Thursday night. Got the save this afternoon, and now trying to get the save again. He does such a good job of keeping the ball down. He's not a closer that's going to come in and throw 98 miles an hour. He changes speeds well. Good sinking fastball. We saw one change up after another. 82, 83, 82. That last one to Hicks. 80. Popped up to center. Right at Trout. And the Twins have lost five home games in a row. And the Angels, Tom Hanneman, have jumped past the Twins now in the standings for that second wild card spot. Dick, the Angels make it seven straight wins over the Twins at Target Field with a 5 2 victory tonight. Up next on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. We'll break down this game, hear from Paul Molitor, and look ahead tomorrow afternoon's series finale.